Early studies in the pandemic seem to show that your blood type could protect you from a severe COVID-19 infection. But with the science this year moving so fast around everything coronavirus related, is this still the case? And what correlation might there be with long COVID? Because as much as nobody wants to be sick for two or three weeks, I can guarantee you that no one wants to be sick for six months and counting. So I did some research, 950 long haulers, are they all AB negative? Stick around and find out. The notion that blood type might have prognostic value in COVID-19 is intriguing, but we're at the stage of trying to determine if this association is even real. So says Christopher Latz, MD. But there is significant long-standing evidence that blood type is associated with prevalence of certain types of disease. See this detailed list here where you can see a varied list of bacterial and viral infections. See the norovirus risk factors for blood groups O and A. And another nasty viral illness well known for its long tail, chikungunya, has got strong evidence that O positive blood types were at particular risk, while rhesus negative individuals appeared to have significant resistance to the illness. So why shouldn't it be the same for SARS-CoV-2? At this point it's probably worth a quick recap on what blood groups actually are. There are four main blood types, A, B, AB and O. Which of these you are will depend on the genes you inherit from your parents. And your red blood cells in any of these groups may or may not have an extra D protein on the surface. If you have it, that means you're rhesus positive, and if you don't, you're rhesus negative. So in total, that gives us eight groups. What's the difference between them? Well, the A and B describe a type of antigens either present or absent in your red blood cells. Each of the different types has a different combination of antigens and antibodies, uh, which is why blood type compatibility is a thing for transfusions. And why it's not surprising to see different degrees of risk or resistance to different types of disease, depending on blood type. It's also worth pointing out that blood types are also not evenly distributed. Some are common, some are rare, and this will differ depending on whereabouts in the world you are. Large difference in the proportion of O positive between Pakistan and Peru, as you can see here. In the UK, the distribution looks something like this, uh, and in the US it's very slightly different. Why does this matter? Well, because I've got 950 long haulers blood types, and if the distribution doesn't match an evenly balanced spread of these, then something fishy is going on with the COVID. Early in the pandemic, there were several reports that blood type A was connected to higher risk of severe COVID. This preprint from China in March found that blood group A was associated with a higher risk for acquiring COVID-19 compared with non-A blood groups, whereas blood group O was associated with a lower risk for the infection compared with non-O blood groups. Although the study itself called out its own limitations. Where have we got to since? Well, in June, a group of scientists from Europe and Australia reported the results of a study comparing genome data from 1,610 patients with severe COVID-19 and 2,205 healthy blood donors, all in Italy and Spain. The study found that, compared with people with other blood types, those with type A had a 45% higher risk of developing severe COVID-19 if infected, whereas those with type O had a 35% lower risk. Another study reported in the Annals of Haematology that they had found no relationship between severe COVID-19 and blood type. Latz and his co-authors focused on 1,289 people who tested positive for SARS-CoV-2. Multivariate analysis found that people who were rhesus positive were more likely to test positive than people who were rhesus negative, and those with B or AB blood were more likely to test positive than those with type O blood. So what are we left with? inconclusive results, and nothing really that ties blood type to long COVID, which is really a condition in itself. This is shown by the fact that whilst males are more likely to develop severe COVID-19, data from the King's College London Symptom Tracker app has shown that females are more than twice as likely as males to go on to develop long COVID. Different pathophysiology, different condition. Anyway, let's dive into the data. So my study involved 950 long haulers drawn from several long COVID support groups on Facebook and the Body Politic group on Slack. 
There are some caveats to this data, of course. Uh, the sample is both self-selecting and self-reporting. Uh, the platforms themselves will create a bit of a demographic bias, um, and some groups of people are more likely to know their blood types than others, uh, those with pre-existing conditions or perhaps uh, women who have had children. But how much will those factors skew the data? Not a huge amount, I don't think. The majority of the respondents were from the UK, uh, with a smaller proportion from the US and a smattering from Europe. Normalising the blood groups according to the distribution of respondents, we get the following expectation. Uh, that is to say, if the blood groups were going to match the expectation uh, across the population at large. If there's some correlation with the studies we've seen for short-term and severe COVID-19, then we'd expect to see fewer O's and a greater proportion of type A's, B's and AB's. And what have we got? Here we are. The first thing you'll notice is that we've got a much lower O positive rate than in the general population would expect. A positive is slightly higher, but where it gets really interesting is in the AB results. 32 to 33.4 for A positive isn't such a jump, but 2.5 to 4.3 is a 72% higher instance of AB positive, and for AB negative, the rate of 2.1 is 110% higher than expected. And how about the overall instance of rhesus positive versus rhesus negative? Well, we'd expect rhesus positive to be 78.5% and rhesus negative to be 21.5%. And we've got 74.8% positive and 25.2% negative. Which is slightly at odds with the findings of this preprint study from Columbia University, which found rhesus negative blood type to have a protective effect. To be honest, I'm not quite sure what to read into this. Is this within a margin of error, or is it perhaps significant? I'd appreciate any biologist's thoughts on why the absence of the uh, rhesus D protein might have a different effect for long COVID. And that rhesus factor may have an important role to play uh, in the next part of the long COVID experience I'm going to look at, and that is recovery. So this blood type data came out of a large study looking into recovery. I'll be going into some of those details uh, in more depth in my next film. But I thought it was worth breaking down the blood types by those who are reporting some kind of recovery. Is it possible that some blood types recover at different rates than others? Well, here's the data on that front. There's a lot here, so let me just pick up on the highlights. The top row here is the data from the entire sample, 1,593 people. Of these, 567 said they'd felt overall a slight diminishing of their symptoms over time. 355 said they'd felt a large degree of recovery, and 25 said they had recovered. 35.4, 22.2, and 1.6%. Here's how the blood types break down. Of the two largest blood groups, A positive was about the same as O positive, about 59% showing some signs of recovery. Where it gets interesting is in the O negative and A negative groups, significantly higher recovery rates. Is that reflected in the minor blood groups too? Well, the sample sizes are smaller there, but certainly for A, B negative. If we break down the overall rhesus positive versus rhesus negative for all blood groups, we can see the recovery rate difference holds. And this is a big sample size, so I don't think it's errant data. One more interesting observation, of the 1,593 in the total sample, 949 knew their blood type and 644 did not. The overall recovery rate for those who knew their blood type was higher. Why? Well, there's loads of possible reasons for this, from selection bias to knowledge and management of pre-existing conditions. I thought it was worth mentioning, as it is interesting. One final note here on blood type and recovery. The smaller samples with the less frequent blood groups may be prone to throwing out some unusual results, but across the larger samples of the A and O groups, typically hundreds in each category, look how much variance there is. Different colours here representing different blood types and their prevalence in each type of recovery. The pressures of long COVID mean I don't really have the time, energy or brain power at the moment to go into a greater statistical analysis of this data, but I do think it's interesting and warrants further research. So what do I think is going on? Trying to judge whether your blood type makes you more likely to develop long COVID is hard in this data. We'd need a, a parallel group who just had a short infection and didn't go on to develop long COVID to be able to assess that. So what we're probably seeing here is simply a reflection of the probability of actually getting a COVID infection in the first place. 
But for me, there are two significant findings in this data. The first is that those with blood group O are underrepresented in this sample, uh, backing up those other studies we've seen about short-term COVID. Is it possible that the absence of A and B antigens and the presence of the anti-A and anti-B uh, antibodies are having some impact on the way that the virus propagates given the vascular nature of COVID-19? And what about that AB result showing that the prevalence of long COVID was significantly higher both for AB positive and AB negative individuals? Is there any other evidence for this? Well, the Columbia University study found that risk of death was increased for type AB. What's going on here? Well, death from COVID-19 is often associated with a huge cytokine storm, which is responsible for the pneumonia and subsequent ARDS. And the engine of long COVID is, yes, the inflammatory response caused by a huge cytokine storm. Now, the immune system is complicated, and the cytokines involved in these two responses are also different. But is there some kind of common causality in the blood type that leads to this kind of immune response in both of these conditions? Maybe. So, no hard and fast conclusions here, but for me, this is a subject that warrants future research. There definitely is something fishy going on. The next thing you'll see in this channel will either be uh, an in-depth analysis of my 1,600-person study uh, into recovery from long COVID, or it could be uh, the Should You Get the Flu Jab film, which I'm trying to line up at the moment, or it could even be, finally, the, uh, the promo I shot months ago that almost killed me and I've almost finally finished post on. Who knows? Till next time.